When you conduct a search in a Palestinian's home, it's not that you need a court order. In Hebron, if you're a Palestinian, I'll enter your house whenever I feel like it and search for whatever I want, and I'll turn your house upside down if I want to. You simply open up their home and you tell them, get out of the way, we're going up to the roof. You already know that they'll shout and object, and you know that it doesn't matter because you're going to go up to the roof. And he's asked by the interviewer, what do you do when they shout and object? You shout louder and they get it. I mean, they're not idiots, most of them. They know you'll arrest them or you'll hit them. And in the end, you'll get on the roof. They won't stop you from going up on the roof. They understand who has the power. This is a booklet of testimonies. It's called Occupying Hebron. Um, and we published it just recently. Testimonies from 2011 till 2017 from Hebron. That's what really screwed you up in Hebron. When you leave, everything just continues. There isn't even any discourse of, like, rights. To have rights, you need a system that enforces law and order. And over there, nobody even acknowledges them. So this is just to give you a little bit of um, a sense of the mindset. This is the norm, this is the routine of how you make your presence felt. Tel Aviv is a beautiful city uh, with a very liberal culture, wide boulevards, beaches, parties, and we're happy that all these tourists came to Tel Aviv to party with us. But we also want them to see the full picture. We're trying to get the public to understand what we did in our military service so they understand the prices of continuing the control of millions of Palestinians. Um, throughout the territories. What would be the best way to get the attention of tourists? Well, we should put up a billboard on the highway, basically stressing the difference, inviting them to Tel Aviv, to the beach, but putting a guard tower right next to that lifeguard's tower. What happens in Eurovision is that we now have the opportunity to bring a lot of tourists who are here anyway to come and see how they can support Israelis and Palestinians who want to end the occupation. Again, good morning to everyone and thank you for coming on to this tour. Uh, my name is Murphy and I'm a member of Breaking the Silence. Hebron specifically is one of the most violent places, uh, unfortunately till today, in this region. For a lot of people and definitely a lot of folks at Breaking the Silence, you'll hear this repeated notion of, I thought I was going to be the moral soldier. And I think the premise of our work is understanding that you can't be that good person, you can't be that moral soldier. Um, occupation is not something that can be conducted in a moral or enlightened way, so to speak. So, we entered the West Bank, we're inside the settlement of Kiryat Alba, which by the way is also a closed military zone for Palestinians by default, like any other settlement. There's a plaque here commemorating the saint or the holy Rabbi Meir Kahana, lover of Israel, great in the Torah, a hero in his deeds, um, and Nirzach HaKidush Hashem, which means to murder on the sanctification of the name of God, martyred. Um, Meir Kahana um, was uh, an extremely racist. Um, uh, one, yeah, he's officially he's a rabbi, but uh, it's hard to it's hard to call him that. Uh, one of his avid uh, students was Baruch Goldstein, who commits the massacre in 1994 in the Tomb of the Patriarchs. This is a regional park inside an Israeli settlement, and so this was built by Israeli taxpayers' money. The park commemorating um, Meir Kahana, which was basically a Jewish supremacist. We're at the uh, grave of uh, the murderer, uh, Baruch Goldstein. And on this despicable person's grave, it says the Saint Rab uh, Dr. Rabbi Baruch Kapel Goldstein, a uh, bit of his uh, lineage, and then gave his life for the nation of Israel, his Torah, and his land, uh, died with clean hands and a pure heart. This is the man who murdered 29 Palestinians in the tomb of the Patriarchs while they were praying and injured another 115. Sometimes we're escorted by a patrol of soldiers, just so you know that that's 
uh, possibility. And also, as, as I said earlier, we may get stopped by soldiers or there may be some sort of harassment by settlers. Um, usually not physical, just like filming and like saying bad words and trying to get us riled up. The best way to respond to such kind of disturbances is not to respond at all, okay? We're not here to have a fighting match with extremist settlers. Um, this is an educational tour. Where we're standing is right at this intersection, okay, between the various colors, various restrictions. So if we walk in that direction where we came from, next to the bathroom, that's this red area, meaning completely sterilized, off limits for Palestinians, unless they live on the other side of the road and have to walk through there. Cars are not allowed to drive here, shops are closed, but pedestrians can walk until a certain point, which is a few hundred meters ahead of us, we'll get to that checkpoint in which the road becomes completely sterilized, off limits for Palestinians, okay? The justification for a lot of what we're going to see in Hebron is security. Anyone in the right mind sees this and says, well, if someone wants to stab the person walking next to them, this 80 centimeter barrier is not stopping them from doing so. The heart of it is separation. So in 2003, uh, the civil administration, the unit that I served in, uh, here in Hebron writes, puts together a report about dozens of uh, different acts of vandalism and violence from Israeli settlers. After three years of the, of the, the second intifada, what they're saying is we, we don't have enough data, we don't really know what's going on. They managed to enter dozens of shops uh, under the radar, so to speak. The state of Israel... Hi. The state of Israel looks very bad with regard to the rule of law in Hebron. Sometimes she drives by and, you know, curses us. We've also seen her attack guys, we've seen her attack other activists there in Hebron. She's a very dangerous, violent person. She's also the head of education for the uh, settlement, which I think speaks volumes of how they're bringing up the children there with what racist supremacist ideology. not only about enjoying our beaches, it's also helping us fight for justice and equality for everyone here because the first step towards a dignified and secure life for Israelis and Palestinians is ending the occupation. I'm 